curls and waves bad hair means you look like a slave at the turn of the century it's time for us to redefine who we be you can shave it off like a south african beauty Got it hello everyone thank you so much for watching yet another episode of the emmanuel show today's show is, is all of my shows are actually special but this one is is coming from a place of the heart there's a young woman who i had a chance to meet just last year um, has grown to me and I've grown to her and she's here to share her story, her testimony about her life, her loves, some of the things that brings her up and some of the things that brings her down. Just share her testimony of who she is and who, how she became the woman she is today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Renee O'Shea. Renee! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See, I try to give the interviews, I try to give, you know, make it special, make it special you know, easy. make the introduction, you know, because all of my interviews are special. I, I love every single person they actually chose to come on and be a part of this experience. Thank you. You guys are pouring into me as much as I'm trying to pour out, and I thank you so much for being a part. So, Renee, Everybody didn't get a chance to meet when we met. Everybody doesn't know who you are. So here's your opportunity to the world. Tell the world who you are. Let's see. First and foremost, I am a mother okay. to a beautiful, yes, I have to give a shout out to this child because she's, well, she's not a child, but she's my baby. Mm -hmm. um, my 21 year old, Alexandria, um, she is, she's, we feed off of each other. Mm -hmm. So when I see her accomplish something, it makes me say, okay, my baby can do it. I definitely can do it. So, and then she feeds off of me. So we kind of, that's, we, we play tag, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just waiting for December to get here. And she's not coming home. Mm -hmm. she's, she's found her independence. She's still in Kansas City. That's where she's staying. I'm, I kind of miss her. And then when she's here, I want to punch her in the face and then tell her to go home. <laughs> but, you know, that's, mm -hmm. but that is, that's my everything right there. Okay, so tell me about you, your career goals. What's your next career? What's your career now? What um, are you into? I am all over the place right now. Mm -hmm. um, the latest thing I have done, I was given this amazing opportunity to do interviews at the Oscars mm -hmm. in February. So that was like, okay. So um, different feeling because instead of me being backstage, mm -hmm. I'm literally right up front with a mic in my hand doing all these different interviews and it was amazing and then for some of these people to actually recognize who I was was like okay I must be doing something right so uh -huh. it's amazing um outside of that uh I kind of venture off into another stage of modeling uh -huh. because remember when we met last year uh -huh. I was a plus size model okay so now I'm kind of in between Okay. So I'm not your standard model because I don't have the height. I'm still five foot one. That mm -hmm. didn't change. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a standard size. I'm a size four, mm -hmm. but I still have everything else. So it's like, where do I fit? So I have to start over from there. But I do still do a lot of the award shows. Um, okay. So next week I'll be in LA for Radio Disney as well as BT. So that's like Okay, so that's still going. Um, and then my day job. I'm a nurse by day. <laughs> so uh -huh. that's where the bulk of my, my finances come from. Okay, so you you touched on it in, in your last answer that you said you were one size, now you are completely different. I do remember you being a little bit thicker, if I can say that. A little but bit? I, a little bit thicker. <laughs> How did you lose the weight? How much weight did you lose? What, walk me through this process and how you a slim picking now and how you started off. Like, what, what okay. how, okay. how, how? So, um, I will be completely transparent about that. Okay. Um, at one point it was like, eh, now it's my business, my life, I'm not going to say anything. Now, I've always been 
a small one, always. My parents are small, my daughter is small, but medication because I'm a horrible asthmatic, blew me up. And then you have that whole birth control thing, blew me up and I couldn't get the weight off at all. So it started to make me sicker. Um, I've had several strokes. Um, ended up with sleep apnea again. I set up residence in ICU once a month because of my asthma. And I'm like, okay, well, what can we do to fix this? Because something's going to happen. I, I still have a, a kid. I can't just, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my option, lose the weight. Yeah, okay. Losing the weight was never the issue. It was keeping it off. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> after speaking with my doctors for over a year and them watching my weight do this for 10 years, mm -hmm. I had a gaseous sleeve. So, um, it kind of has its ups and downs, okay? Great results. I am happy with all of the results. I am 89 pounds down. Mm -hmm. So, um, I went from 242, I am now 152 pounds. So, I'm staying steady at 152, I'm happy with 152, but there are a lot of other things that come with that. And I get a lot of, oh my God, what did you do, what did you do, what did you do? And yes, I worked out. Yes, I eat right. Um, I lost 50 pounds on my own. The last of it came off with the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but it's a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. So when you want to get up and go and eat and do all these different things, you can. Mm -hmm. So my stomach right now is about the size of a toddler. Mm -hmm. So I can eat four ounces at a time. And, it, and I might be full off of that four ounces for about eight hours or uh -huh. more. Okay. Um, so I have to choose between do I want to eat or do I want to drink something. Mm -hmm. um, I throw up daily because if it's too heavy, it's, it's coming back up. Mm -hmm. So uh, spaghetti, I can't have it mm -hmm. because the sauce irritates me. Mm -hmm. Alfredo, I love Alfredo. I make great Alfredo. I can't eat it. It's too heavy. So it's a lot of trying to figure out what you can eat and what you can't eat now. Mm -hmm. So um, I can get a couple of bites in and then I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Come back to that later. Mm -hmm. Um, it takes me to eat dinner about three hours. Oh, Because wow. I have to come back to it. You have to come back to it. I get my bites in and then uh, put it on the stove or in the microwave and then come back for it. And then sometimes I don't. I don't have the sensation of I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. So with that came the constant dropping of the blood sugar. Because mm -hmm. I don't have enough in my system. So it's kind of like a catch-22. It's mm -hmm. great. I'm happy. I feel much better. I can breathe. I can walk. I can bend. But then it's like, am I hungry? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just try to eat something. Yeah, well, no, don't eat that because that's too much. It's too heavy. And I don't know it until it's already too late. Okay. So um, going out to dinner with friends and family is really hard mm -hmm. because I don't get that whole... You, you know how people, you're not going to eat anything? Because everybody doesn't know. Mm -hmm. It's not something I broadcast. Right. So, um, but it was, like I said, it, it has it, its up and, up ups and downs. So, now that you, you know, you have a sleeve, is there a possible way that you could, they could remove it and you go okay. back? So, here's the thing. People don't understand mm -hmm. what a gastric sleeve is. There, it's not them actually pulling the sleeve over my stomach. It's them actually surgically going in and cutting <laughs> the majority of your your actual stomach muscle off and pulling it out and tossing it in the trash and stapling what they have left. So there is no putting it back or removing anything. Now I can stretch it out, but that's painful to try to even stretch it out because that means putting more food in, making yourself sicker. And then gaining the weight back. Uh, sorry, I went through too much to lose it to, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's it's like okay. what you do. It's it's what you do. But I'm 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 good with where I am. Um, people around me that actually care understand mm -hmm. what's going on. So it's not one of those things of we can't go out. They understand. Like when me and my sisters go out, they order. I'm like. It's reheated, like so. I eat off of their plate. Mm -hmm. I get my couple of four fools, and I'm good. Mm -hmm. So those that understand understand, and mm -hmm. then those that don't, 
Now, what is, although you are comfortable in your decision and you stand behind it, mm -hmm. what is the biggest misconception that, you know, people have with going through weighing, trying to get the surgery or, or not? Would you, are you an advocate for the surgery? If no. you need it. Only if you need um, it. If you need it. I actually needed it. Um, like, like we spoke about earlier, I was doing fine plus size. Health wise, I was not. Mm -hmm. So, um, and with that came a lot of depression and that's a whole nother side to everything. So, everything plays on top of each other. Everything is just because of this cause and effect, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, it wasn't, it was never about vanity. Um, mm -hmm. It was always about my health. It was a huge issue. Mm -hmm. So, and then with my health, then it's like, okay, well, you can't go back to work because you need to take these many days off. So, it was, it was a lot of, mm -hmm. it was a lot of craziness. So, am I like, Am I an advocate for it? Of course, if you need it. Um, do I like the results? I love my results. Like, I'm always in a pair of shorts and a crop top now. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still a lot of, you know, it's, it's a lot of mixed reviews when people see me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a lot of, <laughs> I'm smoking crack. Uh, cause I lost weight so quickly. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of everybody assumed the worst. Assumed it was. Oh, she had liposuction. I'm like, if I had liposuction, we need to go back to the doctor because they missed some spots. Mm -hmm. They missed a lot of spots, like my whole. Mm -hmm. But when I do, you definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what advice would you give to somebody who's considering the weight loss surgery? Weigh your options. Know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Um. Make sure you can deal with it because, again, you still have to, like, with the surgery, they make you see a psychologist mm -hmm. to make sure that you are coping. Because when I first had the surgery, I'm not going to lie, I was like, oh, my God, I think I may have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because when the weight first starts to come off, it's like, okay, am I sagging? I'm sagging. And that was a lot, like, I don't know if I can deal with this because my, my, my kneecaps look like eyelids. I'm like okay. It, and seriously, it was just like I don't know what just happened. I maybe I shouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. And then as the weight came off a little bit more, it just I promise you I haven't been to a gym yet. I just got released mm -hmm. to to say okay, you're good to go because I kept having complications. Um, but it it kind of just went into place and fell off where it was supposed to fall off, and everything just kind of pulled together. So the only problem area I have is the same problem area I've had, which was my belly. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I mean, my bat wings, but I had bat wings before. Mm -hmm. So that's nothing new. But everything else kind of just went back into place. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're good now. Okay. So, um, but it's, it's a lot that goes with it. It's, it's, when I tell you it's not easy, every week I was buying a different pair of jeans. I'm like, I just bought three pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's it's I've tapered off right now at a, a four six mm -hmm. depending on who made it. So yeah, a okay. lot of I've given away clothes, shoes, coats. Like I really have to start my entire wardrobe, over. and I didn't think it was going to happen that fast, but it did. Mm -hmm. You you're comfortable with your career. You're mm -hmm. comfortable in in your in in the decisions that you've made. I am. The advice that you give young women, not just young women, anybody who actually was considering the surgery and understanding to weigh the, weigh your options, weigh your particular options. What's next for you? Living and enjoying it. Um, I made a promise to my dad when he passed away two weeks before my 40th birthday last year mm -hmm. that uh, I would make sure that I continue to live my life. Because there were times when, and I'm I'm sorry because uh, it's Father's Day mm -hmm. and but uh it's been times when I've literally tried to end my life because I'm like it's too much going on. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter was that reason for me to get up and and, and go to the hospital and say okay we need some help, um, but. Live as 
much as I can. So I'm never home. I travel. Like my daughter's old enough. She's not at home with me. So where you want to go? Who wants to come? Let's go. Where you want? So I'm living my life and enjoying it and um, working my regular job, which I love, which is nursing, which is my passion. Sometimes you have to take a break from it, you know. So uh, I try to mix up, mix, mix and match what I do as far as my career. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed this year my pictures when I do photo shoots are so much stronger mm -hmm. um, it, and I have a lot more opportunities coming my way um, I like to be behind the scenes a lot so I mean it's photo shoots that I've participated in that I was the director for mm -hmm. um, I still have a strong support system when it comes to modeling um Miss Nikki Mack from Atlanta. When I say breathes life into me, mm -hmm. and it was, it was so much going on last year. Horrible breakups. Um, you know, my dad passing away. You you lose friends that you think were friends. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of finding out who's for you and who's not. So it's 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 a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, also um, I have to give up my title as Miss Indiana Kirby Diva this year in September. Not because um, of anything that I've done. It's because I'm no longer mm -hmm. a Kirby no. Diva. Okay. So <laughs> I have to go for another title. So, um, But uh, I, I don't regret any of the changes that I have to make. Mm -hmm. So Because they're all happening for the better. Okay. So, well, that's that's it from on my end. I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing your testimony um, and being very, very transparent, which is something that we are definitely lacking in the world today. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, and to my fans and to the beautiful people that are watching the episode, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Um, you can find Renee and all of her information on the website if you log online to www.theemanualshow.com and you will be able to click on this particular episode, find Renee, and go ahead and link up with her. She's a woman of, of, of beautiful means, who, who means the world to me personally. So thank you so much for watching. And as I like to say, when I sign on the show, from my heart to yours, live the best life. You know I am. God bless. God bless. I'm going to thank you all for watching another episode of The Emanuel Show. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming next week. Uh, I wasn't raised in church, but my mother and father knew the Lord. My grandmother knew the Lord. She was a praying woman of God. And um, I lost my limb. Um, I didn't stop doing the drugs. I couldn't. You know, they say alcohol and drugs is a, it's a disease. Uh, to me, it was a disease back then. But when the Lord delivered me over 15 years ago from the drugs and alcohol, I had lost everything. It's true. You lose everything. You lose your family. You lose everything. I mean, and it's either jail, institution, or death. And I ended up losing my, my lower extremity, which was a money maker. See, this episode and many more like it, I ask you guys to watch and log on to www.theemanualshow.com. We also ask you guys to follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, tweet us, and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. I thank you all again for watching. Follow us on all of our on all of our social media. Like and comment on everything. We want to know your thoughts. We want to know your feedback. Thanks again. Good hair means curls and waves. Bad hair means you look like a slave. At the turn of the century, it's time for us to redefine who we be. You can shave it off.